Thursday night football, generally the games are pretty crappy, especially at this point of the year. And the reason they're crappy, it's not just the matchups. They're crappy, of course, because guys are busted up. Guys are tired. The last thing they want to do is play on a short week. And for that reason, a lot of times, the games look exactly like that. It feels like every Thursday night involves the Jags losing to somebody 6-3 to three in the rain. But you can't tell me last night's game was just another terrible Thursday night matchup because it wasn't. I mean, yeah, it was ugly. No, it was not competitive. But just because it was ugly and not competitive does not mean that it wasn't awesome. Because you know what? It was. It was. For years, anytime there was any mention of the Falcons and the Patriots, there was always that tired, beaten down, cliche, 28-3 reference. I mean, beaten into the ground. It is like the most tired reset ever. The lamest cliche ever. Addressing it even one more time would be the biggest waste of time ever. Now, don't get me wrong. Atlanta will never live that down. If you had anything to do with that night, or you pulled a check from the Falcons for doing anything at all, either on or off the field, football or business or PR or anything related, if you had anything to do with that organization on that day, blowing a 25-point lead in the Super Bowl is going to stick to you forever. I don't care if you're a coach, an owner, a GM, a player, an intern, a beer vendor, whatever. That's who you are. That will stick to you forever. You know that whole thing about how you could never, ever let your worst moment or your worst night define you? I agree with that, typically. Unless your worst night involves choking away a 25-point lead in the Super Bowl and then shutting it down prematurely, thinking you had already won the game and started to celebrate and didn't finish. Then it does define you. That will define you and anybody who had anything to do with the Falcons that day, and it always will. Sorry to say. But, But you know me. You know me. I'm always looking for positives. I'm always looking for positives, and at least the latest ass-kicking at the hands of the Patriots does give us something new to talk about, something fresh to talk about. And yes, it was awesome. Once again, it was in the running for best, worst game ever, once again. Like, that was the one hospital job that I did not mind sitting through. In fact, I was kind of pissed when it was over. Like, there was no doubt going into the game who was going to win. Just like there was no doubt what the Patriots were going to do in order to win. Shut down Kyle Pitts. This is the Hoods deal, right? Take away what you do best. Take away your most important weapon. Everybody knows it. Bill Belichick was going to put 10 guys on Pitts if that's what he had to do to make sure that the tight end did not do anything to hurt them. And sure enough, Pitts had three receptions for 29 yards, least surprising thing ever. And the Pats punched the Falcons in the face, even less surprising than locking up Pitts. So now would be a pretty good time, I think, to remember multiple things. Number one, the Patriots' defense is damn good. They're damn good. It's true. The Falcons are damn hilarious. Also true. But because I'm all about the positive, let me start with the good stuff. The Patriots D. Like Steve Belichick. I said Stevie. Steve Belichick's crew is good. I mean, how about Hoodman Jr.? My man can lick face and my man can coordinate D. Do not judge a book by its cover. Because if you did, you would just assume that that face licker was the black sheep of the Hood fam. And the only reason the old man keeps him around and keeps him on payroll is because nobody else in any walk of life would ever let that face licker walk into their place of business. Except that's not the case. That's the amazing thing. That's not the case. That licker can coach now. He's got dudes flying around, disrupting everything, and knocking suckers out. I mean, sure, the Falcons are ass at this point. But at one point in the second half, the Falcons had more penalties than first downs. New England has not given up a point since that opening drive against Cleveland. That's 19 straight possessions without a point. New England's defense has scored more points than they've allowed during that stretch. Do you hear what I just said? 
Their defense has scored more points than they have allowed during that stretch. What I'm saying is that unit is filthy. Matthew Judon is saying. We a nasty group. <laughs> My man, you are a nasty group. We a nasty group. You a nasty group for sure. And you, Matthew, you a nasty man. You a nasty man. You a nasty group. And then he elaborated beautifully on what he had just said. We kind of want to be a-holes on the field, the good guys off the field. Oh, hell yes. I love that. Y'all, y'all are a-holes on the field. It's an a-hole business. But you dudes don't seem to bring the a-hole home with you or when you're out in public. You do seem like pretty good guys. But go ahead and be as big of an a-hole and butthole as you want on the field. Give me 53 a-holes on the field, butthole, and I'll butthole, knock out butthole, butthole, 11 or 12 butthole. wins. I'll guarantee a-holes 11 or 12 wins every single year with the occasional chip mixed in. Man, that is such a great quote, and it's so accurate. We want to be a-holes on the field and good guys off it. And right about now, I'm not sure there's a bigger a-hole on the field than Matthew Judon. And I mean that in the best possible way. I love it. A-holes on the field. My man. My man. Now they just need Mac Jones to be a little more of an a-hole on the field. Love the guy. I think he's playing lights out. Could not be more impressed. You know, last night was not his best night. He was solid, but not spectacular. But then again, he didn't need to be, right? Not with the running game that went over 100 yards for the seventh straight game. You want to talk about some a-holes on the field. They are running the hell out of it. And definitely, they didn't need him to be any kind of star last night. Not when that defense was getting after Matt Ryan the way it was. And it wasn't just Judon. There's Dante Hightower, Kyle Van Noy, Christian Barmore, and more. The Patriots have outscored their opponents 72-7 in their last two games. And if you want to tell me that it's because it was against a busted-up Browns team and whatever the hell this Falcons team is, you can get the hell out of here with that. I don't want that kind, or I don't know what kind of world we're living in, that now I've got to get on the air and defend the Patriots, Right? What kind of world are we living in that I have to get on the air and defend the Patriots? What kind of a world is it that I get on the air and I hype the Patriots? But the reason I do is I'm objective as hell. It's not personal. And they're playing their asses off. And they're playing really well. So that was not just a case of them busting up a couple of busted up teams. It's a case of them allowing only 50 points in their last five games. So they have found their proverbial identity even before Thanksgiving. Identity being a-holes on the field, good dudes off it. A-holes on the field, but good guys off the field. Hey, listen, I don't want to get crazy with it, but I have to admit this. I had a passing thought last night. And it didn't last for more than a second or two, but I had a passing thought watching how complete this team is becoming and knowing that the AFC is wide open. And that there are no monsters in the AFC this season. And nobody you can really trust week to week in the AFC this season. You know, good ball. Really good ball. But no monsters. And nobody you can trust. And then I had this passing thought. What if the hood were to chase Nerd 44's ring with a ring of his own the following year? I mean, hate the hood all you want. Hate the pats all you want. But they're playing really well. And Hood may not have ever done a better coaching job than he's doing right now. And how amazing would that be if the Hood were to chase Nerd 44's ring with one of his own? I understand (laughs) there is a ton of football left. I understand that if the Queen had a package, she'd be the king. But I'm here to tell you, if somehow the Hood rebuilt this thing on the fly and worked a miracle, and ripped a chip without TB44, it would be way more impressive than the ring that Brady won last year. And taking nothing away from the GOAT, that was amazing. But Hood ripping one without him, and with Mac Jones as a rookie a year later, would be so much more impressive. And the thing is, it's not impossible. It is. Pretty amazing. But maybe still not as amazing as the Falcons getting outscored 68-3 to in the last two games. 
The Falcons are a field goal away from being shut out in back-to-back games. Pretty amazing. It's incredible. Like, I'm in awe of that. Like, I'm in awe of the fact that the team has now gone more than 130 minutes without a TD. They've been outscored 87-6 to over that stretch. There's a word to describe that kind of play. Ass. And there's more. Falcons corner A.J. Terrell picked off Mac Jones and returned at 35 yards. That meant that he accounted for more yards than anybody on the Falcons offense not named Russell Gage. That's a stat now. I mean, they are so bad. So bad. I almost wanted to hit them with the worst attempted jungle gloss ever, the fail clowns. Who's worse than the Giants? How about the fail clowns? Uh, how's that for fire? The fail clowns. Fail clowns. I get the Corderell Patterson is one of the greatest reinvention stories in league history. But, thank you, Alvin. Well played. But you're not supposed to suddenly play like you're the worst team in the NFL when CP isn't around. Like, my man is valuable, but he's not that valuable. But you want to talk about finishing a game. This is how you finish a game. And I'm not talking about the Pats. I'm talking about the Falcons. The fans should have been throwing hats on the field after that unbelievable hat trick that their dudes pulled off last night. The triple crown of suck. You have no idea what Josh Rosen is looking at? Who the hell cares what Josh Rosen is looking at? He's bleeping Josh Rosen. Josh freaking Rosen was inserted into an actual NFL game. I love this guy. I love this guy. I love Josh Rosen. I was so hyped to see Josh Rosen. But only Josh Rosen could have that happen to him. One of the dudes I admire most in the world is my guy, Ed Milet. Big Ed Milet. Big Ed is a big legend. And he likes to say that things don't happen to you, they happen for you. It's a brilliant statement. And he's right. I love Ed. Except, as it relates to Josh Rosen, things do not happen for him. Things happen to him all the time. Weird things, bad things, inexplicable things. Hell yes, we finally get a Josh Rosen sighting, and he comes in, and he immediately gets pick sixth. Because crap always happens to Josh Rosen. God, I was so fired up to see that guy. I couldn't get to my phone quickly enough. And before then... He had already gotten pick sixth. I just hope my man went home to that hot tub. The hot tub that I hope that he dug out of the ground, that he had at UCLA, and takes with him wherever he goes. I hope he got back in that thing and just chilled out. The Falcons might not deserve better, but my man Rosen does. Either way, it couldn't get any worse. Could not get any worse than that, right? Yes, it could. Bring on Felipe Franks. Bring on another INT. Three QBs, three INTs, All in the same game. Hell, three different QBs throwing three INTs within four minutes. Find me a better stat. That is the absolute best. That'd be like relief pitchers coming in and giving up back-to-back-to-back bombs. Except that happens in baseball, but never in football. You want to know how unlikely that is? How hard that is? Do you know the kind of history that we all witnessed last night? It had been 20 years since a team had three different quarterbacks throw picks in the same game. The last trio to do it. An ionic trio. Moses Marino, Ryan Leaf, and Jim Harbaugh. Find me a more ionic trio than that. Those Chargers had all game, though, to do it. They didn't do it in four minutes. Man, I'm telling you. I am telling you. One last thing about Atlanta. They did look sharp as hell in those uniforms. Unfortunately, that also wrecked the idea of look good, feel good, feel good, play good. Because they look good and they play like ass. At least, though, they did not blow a 28-3 lead. I only wish there was more time on that clock so more Falcon QBs could have come off the sidelines and throw some picks. It's like a who's who of Falcon QB history. And can I tell you, I love a lot of these guys. Matt Schaub. Hey, coach, coach, you need another pick six? Put me in. Come on. 